Okay, we're going to continue on with part two of two for the lecture three, and we're going to start with mixtures. And a mixture is an intermingling of substances. There is no chemical bonding, and the individual parts can be separated by physical means, such as evaporation, magnetic fields, or others. Heterogeneous mixtures are non-uniform. Again, this is like chocolate chips scattered through a chocolate chip cookie. Homogeneous mixtures or homogeneous mixtures are the same throughout. All solutions are homogeneous and homogenized milk is homogeneous as an example. When mixtures are separated, remember that this is a physical change, so no new matter is being created. Filtration separates solids from liquids by use of a physical barrier or filter. Distillation separates mixtures or solutions based on the differences in their po boiling points of the component parts. The mixture is heated and the vapor produced is condensed in a cooled area. Chromatography is the separation of a mixture based on the different molecular sizes of the parts of the mixture. They travel through a paper or gel at different rates and produce distinct bands. Gas chromatography involves heating a substance until it is in a gaseous or vaporous state and then forcing it through an anal analyzer attached to a computer. This is the one you see on forensic shows like CSI and it's ridiculously expensive to actually do so they typically don't do it. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures that are mixed molecule by molecule. Solutions can occur between any states of matter. For example, a solid and liquid would be Kool-Aid. Liquid in a liquid would be antifreeze. A gas in a gas would be air. Yes, air is a solution. A solid in a solid is brass. A liquid in a gas would be water vapor. And a gas in a liquid would be, an example would be carbonated sodas. Like all mixtures, they keep the properties of the individual components and can be separated by physical means. However, solutions are often not easily separated. A chemical reaction means the same thing as a chemical change. They occur when one or more substances are changed into new substances. Reactants are the stuff that you start with. Products are the stuff that you make. If you need to look at a chemical reaction, the reactants are to the side of the area arrow that is pointing away from, um, so the arrow's pointer is toward the products and it's away from the reactants. Chemical reactions create new substances with new properties than the original reactant's properties. You can tell when a chemical reaction happens because there can be energy absorbed or released, color change, odor change, formation of a precipitate, which is the solid coming out of solution, and it is not easily reversed. These are only clues, but not the defining moments of chemical reaction. There are currently 116 elements known. Each one has a one or two letter symbol assigned to it. The first letter is always capitalized and the second one, if it's there, is always lowercase. You don't need to memorize these, but some will end up in your memory simply based on the constant repetition that we'll have in chemistry. Some of the symbols are based in Latin or other terms. For example, lead has a symbol of PB. Because the term for lead in Latin is plumbum, it's also where we get the name plumber, because pipes used to be made out of lead. The chemical formula uses chemical symbols to show elements in a compound. The number of subscripts tells you how many of the previously lit listed atom are present. So example, for water, there are two hydrogens and one oxygen, so H2O. These compounds on this page are water, propane, and bromic acid. You'll find out how to name these later. Mass cannot be created or destroyed in ordinary changes, which are those not involving nuclear processes, such as splitting the atom. All the mass can be accounted for in a reaction, and the mass of the reactants is equal to the mass of the products. That concludes our lecture on chapter th or lecture three, and I highly recommend that you try the quizzes, and I will talk to you at another time. Feel free to see me during office hours if you have questions. Have a good day.